Hey, welcome to another edition of Kyle Meredith with. It's the interview series presented by WFPK and WFPK.org Consequence and the Consequence Podcast Network. Thanks as always for making your way here, for checking out the episode. Please do hit that subscribe button, of course. That way you get three new interviews sent to you every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover the new ones. Of course, you can grab us at uh, Spotify, Apple Podcast, NPR, WFPK.org. Consequence, or of course, right here on YouTube for the video versions. Anywhere you get your podcast from, you can subscribe to Kyle Meredith with. And that's me, Kyle Meredith, today. We're talking Shogun with uh, Tadanobu Asano. Uh, Shogun, one of the biggest shows of the year. If you haven't seen it, though, let me read you the uh, synopsis here. It's the original adaptation of uh, James Clavel's uh, best-selling novel uh, set in Japan in the year 1600 at the dawn of a century-defining civil war. We have uh, Lord uh, Yoshi Torinaga fighting for his life as his, as his enemies on the Council of Regents unite against him. And then a mysterious European ship is found marooned in a nearby fishing village, and its English pilot, John Blackthorn, uh, comes bearing secrets that could help Torinaga tip the scales of power and devastate the formidable influence of Blackthorn's own enemies, the Jesuit priests and Portuguese merchants. Uh, Torinaga and Blackthorn's fates become inextricably tied to their translator, uh, Toro Mariko, a mysterious Christian noblewoman, and the last of a disgraced line while serving her lord amidst his fraught political landscape, Mariko must must reconcile her newfound companionship with Blackthorn, her commitment to the faith that saved her and her duty to her late father. Uh, it really is one of the most incredible series that you'll see this year. And talking with uh, Tadanobu Asano, one of the greatest uh, Japanese actors of all time. Uh, and one of uh, everyone's favorite characters within this show, too. In fact, we're going to be talking about his character, someone that's he's a bad guy he has no loyal he's loyal to whoever's winning at the time and yet we all kind of fall for this guy so i want to hear about what went into kind of creating this character coming from his uh point of view uh of course the traditions uh and uh and and acting in the uh, period that they're in what that offers to an actor uh and the gray area who is good and who is bad if anybody uh, Taranobu is also a musician, punk rock musician, so we're going to talk music, what he's got coming up, who he's being influenced by, the type of music he's creating, all that and more. So let's jump into it. We're talking Shogun. It's Kyle Meredith with uh, Taranobu Asano. Let me see. First off, you just uh, what an amazing show. One of the most brilliant shows I've seen this year. I feel like I should just start out by saying congratulations. It's incredible. I have idea to this. I wish you this. I feel like one of the great things about like we've always as Americans had a big interest in this period in Asian culture, um, Japanese culture. What is it about the period? Th does anything about the period offer anything specific to you as an actor? Yeah, so me personally, um, I'm not a history buff or anything. Um, and so I'm not into researching history, but um, but even in Japan, the Sengoku, the Warring Periods, is is a popular um, time period, even in Japan. And I personally think it's a really alluring and really interesting time period. Yeah, uh, and and it's easy to get caught up in all of the traditions and the rituals and the culture clash. Um, about all this, I guess I should, you know, bring up the why this character. This is not a character that is written to be liked. What drew you to him? Ma, I know. Yeah, um, I know, me personally, I like being the disliked one. So as an actor, um, it, it was actually really fun. Uh, it was a really fun character to work on. Yeah, this seems like a character that is more interested than survival than loyalty. Is that fair? Uh, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, I think that's exactly that way. He's he's not the type of character who's who's trying to grab, you know, the power grab. He's not getting into that, but he's looking at how to survive and also how to live in the most interesting way. So when you have a character then that is written to at the least not be trusted and at most to be detested, why do we like him so much? Because, because as so many people have pointed out, he's become a fan favorite. Yeah, yeah I think that perhaps there's a Yabushige in everyone. And by seeing a Yabushige, it's kind of a, a, a reflection of themselves, of their own Yabushige within them. 
I hope to think that I would never boil someone alive. Well, <laughs> yeah, story. exactly. Um, do you find that, I mean, is there anyone on here who is good and anyone is bad? Is anyone good or bad in this show? Yeah. In Shogun, you know, That's someone funny. might be doing something, um, <laughs> but it it's actually leads to something bad. You know, I think Yabushige might be the most normal of everyone. All the other characters are hiding their truths and uh, living many layers of lies. And um, even, you know, they may be doing something good, but it's actually for a bigger plan. So in that way, I think Yamashi is the most, is the, is the most like the straight shooter. And it's very, um, is perhaps even the most human out of everyone. That's why we love him. <laughs> um, was it a difficult shoot? And I'm asking from the sense of the physicality and being on location. So this uh, yeah, you know, I, I live in Japan, so going on location, you know, we were in Vancouver, I Vancouver, I was there for about eight months. Uh, so being away from home was challenging. And also Vancouver you know, in general just rains a lot. So, you know, when it's raining that much, it's, it kind of becomes a little not, not as fun. So those were definitely challenging. And the role, the Yamashiki role itself, he was physically doing a lot more things and the other roles so that was also physically challenging yeah um what about then you know talking about because it was an all or mostly asian crew but for american television how did that uh influence the experience yeah like uh, Hiro Sonada and I are used to working overseas, but you know this production we had people from Japan coming in and working with uh, the Canadian crew and the U.S. crew, and you know that that posed a lot of challenges. However, thanks to um, Hiro Sonada as a producer, he really bridged that uh, that gap um, or any gap that would be there, and he worked worked so hard to make sure it was a well-oiled machine and everyone worked well together. So hats off to him. Yeah. There is your final scene right before lights out and you look back and there's a look in your eye. What's going through his mind right then? Yeah, that's why I think that if in that moment, you know, Yabushige was feeling, you know, the pain, the joy, um, all those emotions, I think that I, uh, that Yabushige was looking at Toronaga saying, it's, it's your turn now. Is that something you all talked through or was that instinct? Oh, yeah. That I mean, moment came, came about yeah. on set when we were shooting. Yeah, that's one of the most powerful, I think, of the uh, of the series too. Do you find, you know, when when I look at what else you do with your with your artwork, with your music, do you ever find that these characters influence that side of your life? Yeah, I think, yeah, very much there is influence and it goes both ways, you know, because, um, because as a, uh, my artwork can then influence um, Yabushige or my other role. So it actually goes both ways. Yeah. Does, um, do you have, do you use music to help you prepare when you're, when you're acting? Yeah, for Yabushige, um, there was no um, set a song or a set list that I would listen to, but yes, in other roles, I I might um, have a specific song or a set list I'll keep listening to, or else even scents. Um, it could be a perfume or a cologne, but something that plugs me right into the role. Well, then, you didn't have it while you were on set, but when you look back, can you think of a song that would embody this character? That's his theme song. Yeah, I think it, I can't think of one in particular, but probably some sort of hardcore punk rock. Punk rock. Na, 
I would love to hear that soundtrack. <laughs> that is <laughs> <laughs> are you still playing? Do you have music on the way? So yes, uh, so uh, me and my, you know, my my uh, band, we've been talking about recording another album and maybe being able to do a, a live tour. Yeah, I mean, are we are we still talking punk rock? What, what's like what's influencing you musically these days? Yeah, yeah so you know, punk, of course, but ska would it would be really interesting. Ska's coming back. There's a resurgence happening right now. So yeah, is I think with Ska, you can just let go and just dance. Dance to it. <laughs> it's the fun punk rock. I agree. <laughs> um, with all of this success, I know it's a limited series, but certainly the question becomes, would you even want to see a second season happen? <sighs> Yeah, it would be great to see a season two, but you know, Yabushiki has already died, so I don't think I would be part of it. It really is an incredible series. Um, I really enjoy watching you on the screen. Thank you so much for doing what you do, and thank you both for taking the time to talk about it. Yeah, I do those. Thank you so much. And thanks to my guest. Also, thanks to you. For, uh, for checking out the episode in the series. Before you get out of here, hit that subscribe button. Again, uh, you get three brand new interviews every single week. New and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, right here on YouTube or, of course, anywhere in podcast land, including iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, NPR, or WFPK.org as well. A great way to keep up with your favorite artists and discover new ones as well. Then after that, actually head over to WFPK.org. That's where I do a show, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern. It's an hour full of song premieres, music news, anniversary spins, bonus interviews, Monday through Friday, 6 p.m. Eastern at WFPK.org. Consequence has your music and film news. You can also find me on the social media spots, uh, Facebook, Instagram, mostly on Twitter. All three of them, the address is at Kyle Meredith. Do hope you like and follow along. That does it for another edition. I'm Kyle Meredith. I'll see you next time.